So on paper, I'm a full stack developer, but in the last year or two, I'm on the back end staring at the code terminal and Google Docs and not tinkering much with UI or anything like that. Some weeks ago, I built a prototype for PureScript web app and wanted to showcase what I did in just a couple of hours. Pretty much copy pasted all of this and spent most of the time just scaffolding all the configs and dependencies. The idea here is to demo how quickly it is to have something nice running with PureScript, not single-handedly of course, and share minimal interesting projects that can be used to play around with PureScript as well as save myself and others time in the future to start a new project. For this one, I use PureScript, React, Tailwind CSS, and ShadCN UI component. I assume you've heard of the first two, if not, see the PureScript overview video, and the other two are blessings for copy-paste driven development. Tailwind is a CSS framework that provides classes for styling components, and by classes, I mean classes that you can just slap in the markdown, as you can see in this example. Honestly, this extra noise in the markdown was quite scary for me, but I decided to give it a try anyways because I heard it's supposed to be quite composable and also that's what ShotCN uses. And ShotCN is something that tells us that we can build our component library, which I don't care about, but it also says that it's beautifully designed components that you can copy paste into our apps and <laughs> this is pretty much all I ever wanted. If you're wondering what we can copy paste, we can take blocks, like all of this, we can just take and copy paste any of those. For example, this login is something that <laughs> we already saw in my app that I copied from here, but it also provides the smaller pieces, the components themselves. We take smaller components and be limited to bigger blocks. Stuff like buttons, cards, charts, and whatever. So let's take a look at the code. So we have a pure script app because we have pure script build stuff and we also have main, which is entry point for pure script app and all the pure script stuff. But when we look at the ShotCN itself, ShotCN components come as TypeScript components and the only thing we do import them and we wrap them or FFI them to pure script to have a bit different API and usage. One example that we saw is a card. The card is a card and it can have content, description, header, title, and force. And we use all of this to make a login form. We saw this login in the ShotCN website. Here is the code is TypeScript. It tells you you create a card with its classes, headers, description, all all of this, I copied it over, translated it into pure script, depending on your experiences and preferences. One might be better, the other one might not, but it's quite similar. We have a header, we have a title, similar class names, and here's where the Tailwind comes in. All of this is just Tailwind. Instead of having some classes with styles, we just copy the styles from TypeScript into the pure script. The only thing we need to fiddle around is the code, the code and types, because in their example, the form doesn't do anything. More interesting slash complicated thing is to do all the handlers and actually do something. For example, here on the click, we just update the credentials through the use state. We're gonna review some more interesting things later in the video, but for now I wanna focus on how do we get from something that says on the website, copy me over in TypeScript into having it in PureScript app. And we're gonna show it in different steps and different things. We have this preview, which is says under active development, which looks okay. -ish. It's just a card with tailwinds that are copied from the internet, but we can use something that ShotCN already provides. For example, they have alerts and this alert looks like this. It says heads up, blah, blah, blah. And it looks quite similar. It's kind of a card with an icon and title and description. It fits into our app right now and it's a nice demo to show how to go from from here to there which is going to copy the code create a new javascript file drop it in there before we can use the component we need to install it run in the command and they're going to generate everything we need for here after install it we have a new typescript file with all the component the alert alert description alert title and exposing these three things that we're going to use if we switch back to the file we need to export this alert demo implementation i'm keeping it like this for simplicity on the pure script side, first we have this alert demo implementation is a foreign import. We're going to import what's exported in the JavaScript side. FFI component and the score with basic attributes is the simplest way we can import. It means we don't pass any extra props. It's just the default props, something like classes, IDs, and so on. And we don't pass any children to it. Just because this component is self-contained copy-paste, we want to instantiate it without any props, pretty much. So we use React element to create this demo implementation. And we use this and save course props to convert the props. This is not necessary in this case is just a copy paste but for consistency i kept it we might need it later and if we want to use it we have to do alert demo and pass the props but we don't have any props so props is empty we can comment around the rest and if we run we can see that we got our prop here so it's not very nice we probably want to center it or have some sort of wrapping around it so if we we go <laughs> Google how to add Tailwind centers. We can find the documentation Tailwind CSS, how to do it. Or we can go through random blog posts that I usually do and it's just gonna give you a ready bunch of classes which you can copy paste, place it in your stuff and get stuff right in the middle, which doesn't look nice. So I'll just, let's just keep some padding 
and it's gonna look how it looked before more or less. I think it's quite fine. And if you wanna modify it, add some different text, for example, we go back to the JavaScript part and we change the text to beware and or let's do caution and other construction and it changed right away. But I don't like it, partly because I want to add some action and some other stuff. So let's do it in pure script. First thing we need to do is a new icon. I have some module with icon is a bunch of boilerplate. I copy paste one by one. There are ways to auto generate it. We've done it in previous company where we generated all the icons, but I think it's not necessary now. It takes a second to create a new icon with just a little bit of copy paste. If you go back to the module, we can see that we need three things. We need alert, alert description, and alert title. So if you want to use all these three from pure script, we need to FFI all three or create better APIs for all three. All of them don't take any props, but as you can see this time, they all have children descriptions because you can see alert has nested all of this, title has nested text, and description has nested text as well. So we want to emulate it or have the same API in PureScript, so we have to have children. We also need to do some FFI. We need to export alert, alert title, and alert description implementations. So now we can use it. I copy pasted it, for example, we can start with alert. It has no props and as a children, it takes an icon title and description. So let's start with alert title. Alert title takes no props as well. And the children is just text. So we can just, we can say our text from here. We had under consecutive developer, but let's just do caution again. After that, we have description, which is quite similar, but instead of title, we have description and the text is under active development. The last thing is to add an icon and I have a bit of a special way for adding this in this module. There is a function that takes an icon and makes an icon given some props. In this case, we have make icon construction and classes we take from a previous example with heights and width of four. If you go back, we see a new alert icon. If you want to try to make it with a different variant, for example, make it destructive and red, we need to add a props. In this case, the props takes variant, which is f of string. Why does it have an f? It allows us to use id instead of f and opt instead of f as well. Uh, this is where the unsafe course props comes in quite handy. We use this technique to make sure that variant does not become a required field, but at the same time, when somebody passes it, it's type safe. Later in the video, we talk about more details, but there is a separate video and there is separate blog posts and talking about this in more detail if you're curious. Let's go back to our alert. As you can see, it still works, not passing anything still works. If you don't believe me, I change something, it changes, so it's optional. But if we decide to add a variant, which in this case, destructive string and save it, we had a bit different style and the contrast is not my favorite. Readability is questionable, but I think it's good for now. Let's do a recap. If you want to add a Shatsian component to your PureScript project, you have to find the component, you have to install it with the given tools, and then you have to do the FFI. The JavaScript part is going to be just export of stuff that you care about. In this case, alert, description, title, and so on. And then on the PureScript side, you have to take all of this again and create PureScript bindings. Here you have to choose if there are any special props you care about. The default ones are always going to be here, but if you want to add something special like variant for alert, you have to declare it and you have to decide if it's required or not, what level of type safety the API is going to be, and so on. You can use it either by getting inspiration from the given TypeScript and JavaScript examples, or just use it without examples. And then if we move to blocks, or not just simple components, but bundles of components and more components of components, there are more decisions we have to make. Because if we open the code, we see that, okay, there is a bunch of subcomponents of Shatsian that we first need to install, and then we don't actually have to FFI them. If we want to FFI the whole big dashboard without FFIing subcomponents, we can keep this in TypeScript and have just the dashboard exposed to PureScript. This is one option. The other option is that something that we did before and something you can see in the project that we FFI the subcomponents, and then we build the dashboard using this example in PureScript. There is many options in between. There are many options beyond, and the bigger question question is, what's the point of having PureScript app using TypeScript if we're using all the TypeScript components and so on? For me, the answer is simple. I don't want to write any business logic in TypeScript, let alone in JavaScript. This does not bring me any joy. So when I have some logic, it doesn't have to be too complicated, even just a couple of state management or actions, I already start considering moving code from TypeScript to PureScript. Your mileage might vary. It also might depend on the team, company, and even libraries that you use. If you're still here, interested in PureScript and want to write or read some more PureScript code, let's look at some other minor things that you can find in this repository.
One thing we have in this repository is routing with web router. It showcases just a couple of simple routes, home and then users, where you go to slash users or slash users slash some user ID that might be interesting for people who have not done route in PureScript before. Another thing that related, unrelated, the way we can create hooks in PureScript and the same about the React context. When you need to have a context in two different places, wrap your stuff around, it's going to be similar. If you want to make your own stuff or FFI it, we already covered this before, but the whole option, this um, data is not undefined, not a problem. And for get me not with ID. This is also stylistic choice for ergonomic FFI. You might find it annoying. You might find different ways to do it, but I like it because with just a bit of boilerplate, creating quite a nice and ergonomic API for our users. The, the two most annoying things for me is, is to forget to pass something. Like if type is always required or this flag is always required, I want to not to forget to pass it. And at the same time, I don't want to be annoyed and have to say variant none, size none or null or undefined or whatever every time as well. Before I used to also add types for this, I would create ADT or enum for all the variants and list them by hand. But I find it fine enough to have just a string, maybe with a bigger project and with more middle or junior developers, <laughs> not as skilled at copy paste. You want to add more guardrails, but it, once again, choice. Another small thing in this project that is nice and sweet is some components like clipboard button. It's a really simple component that shows you a lot of different things. A fight button shows how to add actions and, and animations and different stuff and states. On a more actionable part of things, one thing that might be also interesting is the way that we decided to show here the service slash handle pattern instead of having just functions or instead of having something more structured the API client is a bundle of functions which is some sort of module it's just one way of doing things it shows you one usage here the production usage can be one thing but then in production it could be another one something worth considering it's not the best thing in the world it's not the worst one but for the smaller project and for smaller things it allows you to balance between having unstructured bunch of functions and having something easy to test and mock and substitute. For example, here we showcase that find user function is just a mock that returns you something and you can implement it if you want. The other one is a mock, but we also showcase a more appropriate implementation with a fetch library and fetch is a fetch library on top of the JavaScript fetch. Together with your JSON, that does all the JSON parsing and pressing. If you have a simple record or an object, you don't need to write any parsers or anything. The library does all it for you. The only thing you might need to do if you have some new types like user ID in this case, you need to derive the read for and write for and you have some additional type safety for a little price. Showcase something more realistic. So usually in production, you want to look at a status response. You want to see that if we got something successful and we pass on the JSON or we got some unexpected request codes here, we check in for 401 and if not, we refresh the token. But there's a different approaches to it. Some people update the tokens in the background. Some people update the tokens before the call. You can look at the implementation, play around, do your own stuff, what you think is better. Server is always going to fall because there is no server and it's just an example. And now certification client itself has the way to get a token, refresh token, and also store this in the local storage just to show how it can be done. It's not the best because, <laughs> because it's not implemented properly and there is no logout and also it might be different. But I think it's pretty good place to start if you don't know, haven't done it before or you have to do it before and you don't want it to re-implement it from scratch. I haven't played much with bundlers and configs. It's just something that does not bring me joy. Parcel is that something can be improved. ES build is pretty good now and, and a lot of people use that. The whole app is configured to be in the dark mode all the time. Light mode doesn't work. It's always configured to be dark. This is something that's supposed to be working out of the box with Tailwind and Shatsian, but it didn't work because something in configuration is missing or not working together. On the code side, one thing that would be nice to do is to get rid of all the use of for fetching things. There are Tensec query and other libraries that they do more proper state handling and loading. In this case, if it fails, it fails in the background and then it never gets picked up and it just logs an editor. Uh, it works. It's fine. I don't care for now, but this is something that would be nice to improve as well. So this demo project was ripped out from an existing project. So some parts might be missing or feel out of place, even though it's far from perfect. It's a good start for personal projects, prototypes, internal tools, and even most of the production usages. Having a highly optimized build or an app was not the goal of this demo. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it's ever a goal at the current state of the industry.